So a couple of months ago, I deleted over 700 people from my email list. It was a straight up just like bye 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 from my list. It's not because I didn't like these people or didn't want them to get my emails. Not at all. I deleted them because they were cold subscribers. They were not opening my emails or clicking on anything for months. And what kept me not deleting people for so long, even though I knew this was happening, was the fact that I was seeing this as kind of like a Vandy metric, honestly, that I wanted to protect. I had a subscriber goal for the year that I was trying to hit. And I knew that by deleting people, I'd be set way back on the goal. But I came to my senses and realized that I care more about actually emailing people that care to get my emails. And I went through the process I'm going to talk you guys through on today's episode of contacting your cold subscribers, re-engaging those who want to stay on your list, and then deleting the rest. So if you want to learn how to do this for your own business and make sure you're not sending emails to people who don't want to get them, you're going to want to listen to this episode. So let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth McCravey and you're listening to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Each week, I'll bring you workshop style trainings that teach you how to stand out online, design success from the inside out and create a breakthrough business. It's time to turn viewers into raving fans and design the business and life of your dreams. I'm so excited you're here. Hello, hello, you guys. So I am just in a talking mode this week as I'm recording a little life update before we dive into this topic because I'm really excited about this topic. But a quick life update. So this week at the time of recording, I'm recording this a little bit in advance as usual. But On Monday this week, I spoke at the Sobo event here in Nashville, which is the Society of Women Business Owners, and I actually talked all about digital marketing. We did like an interview style type thing where it was like, talked about social media marketing, email marketing. I literally talked a little bit about what I'm even going to share on today's episode. It was such a fun event. And then rolling into Tuesday, I recorded a podcast episode, then obviously another episode went live as well. So I did that. And then... Then today, it's a Wednesday, so I'm recording this, and I was interviewed on another podcast, and then now I'm recording for my podcast, so it's just all kinds of talking and content creation, and that's kind of the mode I've been in a little bit uh, the past couple days. So all very fun stuff. So to start this episode, though, I want to tell you guys the story behind this title of why I deleted 700 people from my email list. So I want to tell you the story for the purpose of helping you see, could you be making these same mistakes I did originally with email marketing? And then also, could the same situation I'm in also be the situation you're in, but you don't realize it. So here's the story. A couple months ago, email marketing, I guess it's more like probably when I say a couple, I really mean like six months ago, but email marketing was something that was starting, I was starting to dread it basically. And I had my podcast, which I was really excited about. And that made me want to send more frequent emails. But I was always disappointed by the click rate or the open rate and all of that kind of stuff, which left me unmotivated by the whole situation. And I was, again, months ago talking with a fellow business owner friend, and we were actually looking at my emails and specifically sequences for my launch that's now happened. And this was like months before the launch. We were kind of looking at some of those emails. And I was telling her how annoyed I was by my extremely low open rates and click rates on my emails. And she agreed those open rates were not pretty for the number of subscribers I have because I do not have a huge list. Um, Sometimes when you have a bigger list, I feel like it's more understandable to have low open rates because you know that a lot of those people are cold subscribers or you're emailing a ton. uh, So it makes more sense. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, these email rates are not pretty. And I kind of expressed my frustration. And then she asked me, when was the last time I had cleared my list out? And the truth was, I really didn't know. I knew I had done that uh, kind of at some point, but it had definitely been a long time since I had done a big list clear out. And I don't remember if I'd ever like truly done it in the way I did it this time that I'm going to tell you guys about completely different method, but I definitely deleted people before, but not in the way that I knew I needed to. And in the way I'd actually had clients do, but I'd not done myself. So I was like, okay, week later, I was like, I'm going to do this. Let's clear the list out. 
So I just did it. I started the process. So here's why I did. I sent a re-engagement email to the people who weren't opening or clicking my emails, which I'm going to get to all the steps how to do this soon, but I want to kind of walk through. So I send them this email. And after about a week, I deleted the people who didn't respond to the email saying they wanted to stay on the list. And that ended up equaling right around 700 people, a little bit more than that, but somewhere around that number. And I swiped them from my list, literally one click voluntarily by me. And deleting that many people meant I wasn't going to hit my email list goal for the year. And that if someone in the business world was like, Hey, Elizabeth, how many email subscribers do you have? I would have to tell them a smaller number than sounds cool because I just deleted a bunch of them. And the truth is it felt so good to delete the people who weren't engaging because I know email subscribers, is such a vanity metric. And and it, what really matters is having engaged subscribers and you're just throwing your numbers off and possibly paying more money than you should be by keeping people on your list uh, that aren't even opening your emails. And because, I mean, you guys know with most email marketing platforms, it's tiered. So the more subscribers you have, the more money you're paying. And I was actually about to be moved into a next subscriber level um, in my email marketing platform. And so it's like I was about to be paying even more monthly to send emails to people who are not opening them. So it's just one of those things where you've got to like let go of the number on it and know that sending emails to people who actually want to open them is more important than you hitting your subscriber goal. And honestly, the same thing goes for social media and all of it. But I feel like it especially applies here to email marketing. So you've got to clear out your list every now and then. And this episode, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it. So I want to tell one more short story though before we get into that. So I've talked before on here um, on an early episode, episode five to be exact. If you haven't listened to that, it's a really good one about how to get people to actually opt in to get your emails. It's really good stuff. I talk about a lot of the strategies I've used with clients when I did marketing primarily and it's a good episode. So my story though, I actually started collecting emails. I actually recommend this to everyone, this one thing. I started collecting emails to grow my email list before I was ready to email people on a consistent basis. And what I did was I made an opt-in, which was a freebie. Um, it was actually a workbook. You know, People would sign up and they got the workbook. And then I did a two email intro sequence that they would get after that. So I think the way I had it was that, you know, they obviously sign up, they get the freebie. And I think it was the next day they got day one of the intro sequence and then they skip a day and then got the next one. So that was all I did. And I set that up knowing I would not be sending regular emails to people for a while because that just wasn't a priority for me at the time, which I know some of you guys might feel that way. You're juggling so much, you're doing so much client work and you're like, yeah, email marketing is not a priority for me right now, but you know, you eventually want to do it. So my thought is like, why not go ahead and start building a list? Um, so I was stuck though thinking, I can't do that until I'm going to consistently email people every week. Um, but it was silly um, because I did have content that I wanted to create that wasn't blog post type stuff like workbooks and things like that. So it felt silly to wait to set that up. So I did it with a freebie and an intro sequence. And from that alone, I can't remember the exact number, but I know it was around 400 people just through that who all they got was like, I uh, had two different freebies, I think, but they would get one of those. And then they got the intro sequence and then they never heard from me again. And when I decided, okay, I want to start emailing these people regularly, I did a re-engagement email with that list, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this episode, how to do that if you're in this situation where you do have a list, but you're actually not emailing them, which is different than you emailing them and them not opening the emails. So we'll talk about that at the end. But I um, had those people and when I was like, okay, I'm going to commit to doing this regularly, I sent a re-engagement email and only about 30 people opted out of it, which is awesome. So it wasn't like a huge number of like everyone was like, oh yeah, forget this girl. I don't want her emails. They were actually people who did want my emails. So then I had my base list and I started emailing these people semi-regularly and then went through many seasons of like not emailing again and then back to emailing regularly and all over the place. You guys can probably relate. Uh, and then I created more and more freebies, which is another part of this short story. So so some of the freebies I made 
were irrelevant to what I actually sell, which gets into why um, I had so many email subscribers who weren't opening anything. And I've talked about this on episode five, but to tell an abbreviated version, I had one opt-in in particular that was doing super well. Like it ended up being over a thousand subscribers, I believe, that came in through that particular opt-in because it was ranking well in Google for a bunch of different searches and it was getting a lot of signups every day. But it was people who were never going to buy from me and I'm still not sure why all these people are opting in. But the the people, when I looked at the list, it was all people in other countries who had student email addresses, like in a university of some sort. So anyway, it was very strange and they were all on my email list and there was no way they were ever going to hire me for custom design or for a website template or anything. So when these people started getting other emails from me about what I actually sell, they were either deleting the email without opening it or opening it without clicking on anything to delete it, which you guys know people always people all the time do that where you open it and then delete it. So that's what was happening. And now um, a couple months ago, I guess like earlier this year, or no, I guess I know I did this last year, I made that freebie to where now it's still on my site because I still want to provide it because I do think it's valuable and it's good for my SEO, but people don't have to opt in to get it. So you just click it and then you have it. So now I don't have people on my list who I knew were eventually going to become cold subscribers. So the quick lesson in this though, is a way to proactively avoid having cold subscribers is to make your opt-ins relevant to what you sell in order to have an engaged list. So if you're creating freebies for something completely unrelated to your main offer, you could have people people signing up for that. And then you start emailing them about wedding photography. And they're like, wait, I've been married 50 years or you know, whatever it is. Um, So you just got to make the freebies make sense with what you're offering. Okay, so those are my stories. Now let's get into the good stuff here. So I want to chat about open rates, click rates and all that to kind of clarify um, why this matters and what it is. So open rates, you guys probably already know this, but just if you don't, so open rates is the percentage of your audience that opens the email. Um, And most email marketing platforms will also tell you exactly who opened it and the number of people. And you can look up industry standards for you to see what is a good open rate. But I actually have, I'm going to share with you guys some standards for all industries industries in a minute that I found. So the other thing to look at though that I think matters more is click rates because I do know a lot of people open an email in order to delete it, which sucks. And I always hate it when I do that because I'm like, I'm making this person get an open, but I'm not actually reading it. It's just like sometimes easier to, you know, to click it open and then delete it um, if you weren't planning to engage with it. So that's why I think click through rates matter because it's showing someone actually looked at what you sent and then chose to engage with it. So really pay attention to both of these open rates and click through rates. There's other things like bounce rates and unsubscribes and stuff that are also good to look at. And for me, both my click rate and the um, open rate were both worse than I thought they should have been. And when I deleted these people, it actually did improve significantly. So I want to tell you guys, though, the industry average for all industries from uh, this actually from campaign monitor, which they did a big study on this. So I feel like it was a really good resource on this. And this is relevant to 2019. So they said with their users and I think the survey, the research they did went past their users. I'm going to link to it in the show notes if you want to check it out, though. But they said the average for all industries, the average open rate was 17.9%, so basically 18% open rate. And the average click rate was 2.69%, so almost 3%. And then the average bounce rate was about 1%. Average unsubscribe is 0.17%, so not even 1%. So those are just some relevant things to note if you're wondering. Like if you're thinking about yours right now and you're like, are mine bad? Those are the averages for everyone in general. And to be fair, actually, mine, when I was calling them so bad, were actually pretty close to the average. But that's not to say that the average is best. And that's the average for all industries, not for people who are running solely online businesses and not emailing that often. Because when you email more often, I think you're more likely to get people deleting it because there's so many of them. Like I subscribe to emails from a lot of like online boutiques that email me like every day. And I'm like, I'm not going to open this every day. 
day and I'm not going to click on it every day. So I think sometimes that really plays a role in it. But those are what Campaign Monitor says the average um, is for all industries. I'm going to link to that article if you want to see what they did in that same study for your specific industry. So now let's walk through the steps, okay? And I'm going to give you an actual example from the email I sent my list and all the things. So here are the steps to filter, re-engage, and delete your cold subscribers. So the first thing you want to do is segment out the cold subscribers. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost-sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM, and if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month to month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. So here's what I did to figure things out. I created a filter, which is also called a segment in many email marketing platforms. And I selected the people that my platform convert kit was calling cold subscribers. And they actually, it's really cool. A lot of email marketing platforms that have more advanced features are going to do this for you, where you can literally create a segment and then you can see here's who they call cold subscribers. And I looked at their help article on this and they said, we do define cold subscribers as anyone who hasn't opened or clicked an email in the last 90 days and has been subscribed for at least 30 days. So I really love that that setup and differentiation of like what a cold subscriber is. So they haven't opened or clicked in 90 days and they have to have been subscribed for 30 days to even have been a potential cold audience person. Because that makes sense. If you just subscribed in the last 30 days, you haven't been around long enough to like be really a cold person yet. So I love how clear that is. And so I did that filter and then I saw it was a lot of people and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so many people. I did not like it. And so what I did there and what I would recommend you do once you do this filtering, look through the names in the profile in your email marketing platform of those unengaged people because it's going to be super insightful for you to kind of see like, when did they originally subscribe? What forms have they subscribed to? Have they opened any of your emails ever? Have they clicked on any of your emails ever? What country are they in? What is the domain name attached to their email address? All that kind of stuff um, is super helpful. And for me, looking through that, I saw a couple of things I want to share with you guys, some trends. One huge trend I saw was that same freebie I talked about that how all those people who do not care about what I was selling, a lot of them came from that freebie a long time ago. Like again, I've had that freebie since like 2017. So like people who have been on my list forever and had literally never opened another email. So it's like you are the ultimate cult subscriber. Like you subscribed in 2017 and never opened anything again. Uh, And then I also recognized some people that I noticed like, okay, I actually do recognize their name as someone who I see clicking on my emails or like engaging with me on Instagram and that kind of thing. And then I look and I see they are subscribed to me on two email addresses, but then they're obviously only opening 
and clicking with one of their emails. So they were on there twice, which that actually, if if you do e-commerce at all, that probably happens to you a lot, where maybe someone opted in for a freebie on one email, and then they chose to do their purchase on a different email. I've had it before at times where my template buyers are subscribed with me with like four email addresses because they just bought and did everything under different emails. So anyway, that is a common thing. And then I also saw some people where a lot of my emails to them were bouncing, meaning they were just never getting delivered for whatever reason, um, that there's so many things that determine that. But through looking at all of those interesting um, things I was finding through doing research and looking into their profiles, I ended up deleting a lot of people before I even sent them their email in this next step. So there were some people where I'm like, okay, she bought a template from me and she subscribed to me in three places. I'm just going to go ahead and like save her the time and delete the ones that she's not opening on or this person has not opened anything since 2017. Like I'm just going to delete them again, like not even going to send this um, next re-engagement email. So you want to do that first step of segmenting them and then observing what you see. This will also help you like learn about your own emailing. Like when did they stop opening? Did they ever open? Maybe it's something with your subject lines. Are they opening, but never clicking? Like There's just a lot, like I can't say specifically what you'll learn because everyone's business is so different, but I think you really will learn a lot about your email marketing through like observing when did they stop clicking? Did they ever click? Did they ever open? Those kinds of things. So step number two, you're going to craft an email to send to that group of cold subscribers uh, to re-engage them. And I call this the breakup email, (laughs) Um, but you're not going to break up with them. Out of the blue, you want to give them a chance to stay with you if they aren't ready to like, quote unquote, break up yet. Um, So I wouldn't recommend just straight up deleting the people who aren't engaged um, unless you like, like I said, the people I was deleting where I know why. Um, What I would recommend is doing this step of like giving them the opportunity opportunity to say they want to stay. And so in this email you send, here's my advice. I'm actually going to tell you my example um, that I sent in another example as well. But I like to be kind of cute and cheeky with it. I'm kind of like funny and also really short. And you want to be super to the point with it regardless, but making it like very clear too from the subject line what's about. So the subject line I use was stay subscribed or say goodbye, question mark. Um, And I really liked that because since I used the word subscribe, people would know I'm talking about the email list. So like, if you actually do want to stay, you're going to like open it and tell me. Um, So that is some kind of of key things for crafting the email. And I'm going to read you the email in a moment. Um, The third step that you want to do is evaluate the results after the email was sent and then delete the people who didn't engage. So I got to see with that email I sent that the open rate was really low, which showed me, okay, these are the people bringing down my open rates and the click through rate was even worse. And it was pretty spot on to like what you would expect if they really were cold subscribers. So to give you my actual analytics from it, um, 22 people selected that they wanted to stay on the list. So I only had 22 people in there who actually were wanting to stay engaged. And then I had 19 people open it and then actually click the unsubscribe button, which means that they like did see it and said, okay, like, yeah, I don't want her emails anymore, which is totally fine. And then everyone else just didn't engage at all. And I waited a week to go in and delete people to give them like, you know, I don't know how often people check their inboxes. So to give people a week to like make a decision. But then after the week passed, I went in and I deleted all the people who didn't engage and the 19 people who unsubscribed plus the people I deleted plus the people who just didn't engage at all. It was right around like 750 people. So that is what I did. And now I want to give you guys two examples of a good re-engagement email. I'm not going to give you exactly what I had sent people, but I am going to give you an abbreviated version of it. And then also an example from ConvertKit because they have a really good example as well. So here's the, the email I sent to these people. And I'm going to read it to you. So like I said, the subject line was stay subscribed or say goodbye. It's kind of a tongue twister. So I said, hey, with their name in it. So it addresses them, exclamation point. That's it. I noticed you haven't been opening my emails for a while now, which is totally cool. I know life gets busy and inboxes get full. If you'd like to unsubscribe, you can click the unsubscribe button at the bottom of this email and you'll kindly be removed from further emails. And then I added in here a little blurb right after that short sentence. 
about what I typically send. And I made a point to say, I only try to send emails that are truly going to be valuable to you. And I send pretty infrequent emails at the time I was sending it less than once a week on average, like every other week. So I say that. And then after that, I say, perhaps you don't want to unsubscribe. Well, yay for that. I love to keep sending you mail with exclusive content, discounts, and business strategies. To stay on the list, simply click here to reconfirm your subscription. And there's a button that they click. And when they click that, they get sent to a cool, cutesy little page on my website that's saying like, yay, you know, you chose to stay on the list, that kind of thing. And then I give an alternative. I say, or you can click any of the links below and you'll be guided to a podcast episode you can tune into. How? have questions or want to tell me something, simply reply to this email cheering you on, Elizabeth. Um, so that's what I sent. And for the the section where I said, click on any of the links below and you'll be guided to a podcast episode. I just wanted to do that as like another way to ask them to re-engage. Instead of just clicking a button, I'm saying like, hey, like here's content I'm creating for you. Um, if you click on any of those links, like clicking on the one that like, you know, catches your attention. It was like three of my most recent episodes that were all very different from one another um, in the content. So you could click on that and then they would be marked in ConvertKit. So you could do all those settings. I could see that they clicked and then I was filtering the people who clicked into people I wanted to keep on the list. Okay, so kind of complicated, but you can find all kinds of help articles online about how to do this. So here's the example from ConvertKit. I give them full credit for this. This is on um, their help docs as an example of um, a re-engagement email. So they say, hey there, I want to make sure that I'm only sending emails to my readers who are getting a lot of value from them. So I'm removing everyone who isn't engaged from my list. My stats show that you fall into that category. Is that true? If so, no action is required. You'll get removed sometime next week. But if you're freaking out right now thinking, wait, I love your emails, then just click the link below to stay on my list. Thanks. And they put the link there. So I really like that too. That one's a lot shorter and just straight to the point, um, but still kind of cute. So I thought that was a really good example. Another idea I want to give you um, besides those two examples I just presented of a way to like do this in an interesting way is give them an option to only get certain mail from you. So basically be removed from some types of emails, but not all of them. I think that would be really good if you have a lot of different kinds of audiences, because that could explain why people um, might not open a certain email, but then open another one or something. So you should always be filtering emails, though. I'm sure you guys know that, but filtering messages the best you can. So like, for example, for me, someone who's a one to one client or a past template buyer is filtered so that they don't get emails pitching my website templates, because I'm filtering them out as people who have already bought or who it's not relevant to. The only problem is, like I said, sometimes people subscribe and they buy under different emails. Um, and I actually saw that happen a lot during my last launch where I'm seeing people open. And I'm like, wait, you already have a template. And I just sent you all these sales emails. And I'm sorry, but you're subscribed under a bunch of emails. Um, so anyway, filtering people though, in general, you want to try to do. But if you aren't doing that, then that could be a huge explanation for why people aren't engaging. Like maybe, you know, they're only interested in one type of your service, but you're sending emails about all the others. So you could in this re-engagement email say, like if you're using my business for an example, you know, giving an extra option to like only opt out of template related emails. Like if they know they don't want a template, I could say like, I don't, I'm not going to send that to you anymore. Um, or like, say you have a brand where you sell products of some sort, but you also occasionally send like personal update emails. You could let them choose which of those two kinds of emails they want to receive. And then with, depending on what link they're clicking, you're going to be segmenting them in your email marketing platform. So that now you have a new segment and like, these are people you're going to filter out when you send certain certain kinds of emails. I've done it before with marketing clients where we've allowed people to opt out of emails that aren't sales emails. So they're like not getting um, the encouraging updates and like podcast updates or that kind of thing. But instead, they're only going to get sales emails. So that's another idea for kind of how you can do that there. So another thing, you also want to identify why people might not be opening your emails. I already kind of talked about this a little, but I want to give you guys some ideas to consider for why they could be not opening them. So for me, like I said, when I look through the names of the people and what freebies they had subscribed to, um, the main reason I saw was like, they either were like duplicate subscribers, like I said, they were under different emails, or they just simply weren't interested in me and my business. They just wanted that one freebie. Okay, so that could be you. If you have freebies, 
that are not relevant to your offerings, but then you're emailing people by your offerings and all your blog posts that are not relevant to that one freebie, that could be why. Uh, so, so other things to consider though, could you be emailing too often? Like if you're just sending tons of emails, people are probably not going to necessarily be opening all of them. Unless you're in a launch, I feel like that can be a little different, but maybe consider you're emailing too often. People are getting tired. Maybe take a little break and then um, come back in with more new fresh content. Um, another thing to consider, are you sending them at the wrong time for your audience? There are so many different research and studies you can find online about figuring out what time is right. Right? But it really does depend on your audience. Like if you're business to business, that's one audience. If you're selling business to consumers who are working nine to five, they're going to be opening their like fun emails at a completely different time. Also think entrepreneurs are a different category even than like the traditional business to business people. So you just need to think about that and figure out like what open times appear to be best. And I think even though you can read all kinds of like studies online and research people have done, I think the best thing to do for you would be to like kind of just test it by like doing similar subject lines, but at different times and kind of see like which ones uh, do the best depending on like the timing. Another thing to consider is that if you haven't like done a clear out in a really long time, people sometimes change their email addresses. Um, they're obviously not going to like go notify you um, and do that. But that's another time where you could end up having duplicate subscribers because they did change their email address and um, like stayed subscribed on your list. So that would be a group of people that you need to just have be cold subscribers and get rid of them. And I know for me, I have so many email addresses. So I am this person on a lot of people's email lists where like, I don't check that email anymore, but I'm still subscribed to you because I have changed my email address, but I didn't resubscribe on this new email. Or sometimes I did, and then I get emails from them like three times in a row on the same day. Okay. And that same note, people subscribing to you on two emails. Like I said, I have that happen to me with purchases versus people signing up for freebies. So that's something to consider. Another thing, are you always selling them something in the emails? Um, that gets really annoying. You want to also be providing valuable content, not sell stuff. Like with this podcast, I'm not selling you anything right now, but if every one of my podcasts was like, buy the website templates or buy custom design for me, that would be so annoying and none of you would listen. Although I do think it's okay to like talk about your products and services, obviously, but you cannot always be selling stuff to people like that is not helpful. And people are not going to open your emails if they are all sales emails. So also be making sure you're just providing um, content, providing value that relates back to the things you know, your audience is going to be interested in based on the fact that they are subscribed to you and your list. But in general, don't always be sending sales emails. Um, another thing to consider, are your subject lines bad? Um, if you're not writing engaging subject lines, then people aren't going to open it, which means no one's going to click. So if your open rates are especially bad, I think that would kind of be the place to look of like, is it subject lines? If you have really good open rates, but bad click rates, then you need to look at what's like actually happening in the email. Um, because that would point to like, okay, you created something interesting enough in the subject for people to click, but then people didn't actually click on the links in the email. So that's an interesting uh, thing to observe. And I know for me, like I can see the magic of good subject lines constantly. Like I've sent some emails recently where like my open rates were like insanely high because I think the subject line was so engaging. And then I'll send another and I'm like, oh, that wasn't that great of a subject line. And then the open rates are obviously a lot lower. Um, another thing to consider, I keep telling you things to consider, but your emails could be going to spam for people. Um, and most email marketing platforms will kind of help you know if that's what's happening for you. But if that's the case, then obviously people aren't going to open or click. Um, so you would want to make sure you're not doing things that would cause your email to get marked as spam. There's all kinds of articles you can read online um, to figure out why that happens. But making sure that's not happening would be an important thing. So those are kind of some things to consider to make sure that's not you. And now I want to talk to a different group of people. So if you're someone who I mentioned this category earlier, but let's say you have not been emailing your people regularly right now. Um, like you have a list, but maybe you haven't sent an email in like three months or something like that. 
they are probably an unengaged audience. And when you try to like send an email kind of out of the blue, you're probably going to have some bad open rates and bad click through rates and they need to kind of get to know you again, so to speak. So I want to tell you some steps to re-engage this kind of audience. So I think the best way to start re-engaging is by sending consistent emails before you try to unsubscribe people. Because again, like I said, for me, I like when I had that list of like three or 400 people that I hadn't talked to yet. So before I try to like, be like, all of them are cold subscribers, you want to like do some emails to re engage them. So in the first email, I would say you can add a little statement, making the point that you know, you haven't emailed them in a while, maybe reintroduce yourself, make it funny, if you want to tell them what's going on in your life, give a little bit of an update, and then move into a short email that's going to add value to their lives. And this one will need to not be a sales email. I'd actually recommend the next couple emails not being sales emails if they haven't heard from you in forever. Um, and you'll want the email to be focused on just adding value to their lives. And I'm actually going to read you guys a real example um, from one of I, my emails. I sent it almost two years ago to my list um, to re-engage them just after a period of me uh, collecting emails and not really emailing people. People. This was after the first time I did that. So I've had a track record of doing this. And again, I think it's because I was always focused on doing this for my clients. And then I let my own email marketing just fall to the back burner because I was like, didn't have enough mental space for it, I guess. So here's what it said. Hey, addresses them by name. Total honesty. Is anyone else as bad at consistently sending emails as I am? Please tell me I'm not alone here. It's not that I don't love you guys. I just get overwhelmed with so many balls to juggle. Anyone else with me? But fun news, I've decided that this month I'm committing to emails. I'll be sending you an email every two weeks on Friday with my top resources and tips for running a successful business. If this is not for you, no worries. Feel free to unsubscribe below. Otherwise, stay tuned because the action content starts now keep reading and then that intro goes on into it was basically like almost like a blog post but an email with some really helpful stuff that is going to be non salesy but just helpful to people and another thing I want to note here, that first part that I just read to you, it was filtered to only show to people who hadn't subscribed in the last month. Because obviously, like I said, like I was still collecting emails actively. So if I hadn't done that, someone who had just subscribed that day would have gotten a message from me saying, are you bad at sending emails? And they're thinking like, um, I've only been in your emails today. So I didn't know you were bad at doing that. So um, you'd want to filter that to only be seen by the people who actually were used to not getting emails from you. And then from there, you can go into like, okay, I'm going to start like consistently sending emails, like I said, and like, kind of maybe consider reintroducing yourself. Again, like I said, focusing on value content, not sales emails, and try to really commit to being consistent. I don't think it matters, like, to be crazy consistent, like if you miss a week, you know, that's fine, I guess. But like, if you're going to do the email marketing thing, I think trying to be consistent with it is going to be huge because email marketing is so valuable to your business. And I'm always shocked by like how much um, traction I get from emails, even with me telling you the story of like having um, low open rates, I still see sales coming from my email marketing. And that was especially true in my recent launch. And it was a good reminder that like, not everyone sees what you post on Instagram, not everyone sees what you post on Facebook. And in addition to that, you do not own those platforms. I feel like that's so overstated. So I usually don't even talk about it. But it's true. You don't own your Instagram subscriber or your Instagram followers or Facebook followers. And even though I personally don't think Instagram and Facebook are going anywhere, they could. And in that case, how are you going to get in touch with your people again? Um, whereas technically, you still don't own your email list, but email marketing has been more tried and true. And you can always email people like email and in general, you know, pretty tried and true. So just something to think about there that you really don't own that um, platform. And another thing too, I have heard horror stories about launches where Instagram goes down or something like that during your launch. I actually weirdly during my launch, I had on the first day, I still have no idea why it happened. But for me, Instagram, I did a post, right? And Instagram was telling me no one had liked it and no one had commented on it. And it wouldn't let me watch my own stories or post the stories. It let me post the 
stories after like 30 minutes, but then it wouldn't let me watch my stories or see likes on my phone for the whole day. And then um, I was seeing them though on my computer. So I was like, okay, I can actually see and I was commenting people back, but it was like really weird. Um, And it did go away by the end of the day. But like that kind of thing, it's like that I was only reliant on Instagram and something worse was happening. Then it's like, okay, well, that's your only hope here. Okay, so real quick to close this out, though, I want to read you guys some stats um, about email marketing that I thought were really interesting that I, I was looking at earlier today. And I will link to this in the show notes. Um, let me scroll to the top so I can get with it on here. All right, so here's one to start. This is about email welcome sequences, which I, which I thought was really interesting. So it says welcome emails have great potential. On average, the open rate for a welcome email is 80 two percent open rate so saying that like people are more likely to open those kind of emails that are like they're getting first after they like uh signed up for with you okay another interesting fact personalization works wonders for subject lines and it says emails with personalized subject lines generate 50 percent higher open rates which is pretty cool so like putting their name in the subject line this one okay i totally agree with this one so abandoned cart emails sending Three, abandoned cart emails results in a 69% more orders than sending a single email, which when I read that, I was like, I need to up my abandoned cart email game. Right now I have it just sending them one email. Um, I really don't get many abandoned carts, but in most most of them I like end up um, capturing after. But I thought that was really interesting that sending three is better. Okay. Customers like to hear from you. 49% of customers said they would like to receive promotional emails from their favorite brands on a weekly basis. So those were just a couple of fun stats I thought were interesting. Okay, so now, friend, if you have not cleared out your email list this year or ever, then I highly recommend you go through these steps. And if you're still like not sold on doing this, I would say at the least, get into your email marketing platform and just look at how many cold subscribers you have. Like do the filtering thing I'm talking about. Just and if you use a completely different email marketing platform, I'd recommend just searching and kind of getting directions on it to learn how to do it. But look at how many cold subscribers you have and just start looking at their profiles and like see what's going on there. Try to do some research. And I highly recommend doing the re-engagement email to your cold subscribers because you will get a cleaner list, which might motivate you to get more into email marketing and to take it more seriously when you know you're emailing people who actually want to hear from you. And then maybe you can be like me and delete like 750 people from your email list. Okay, so to close this out today, I have a quote. I wish I could pronounce this man's last name. Um, his name is Ram say. Um, but I, I'm going to link, I'm going to put this in the show notes, the quote, but he says a small list that wants exactly what you're offering is better than a bigger list that isn't committed. And I feel like that's so relevant to this episode with the idea of clearing out the clutter on your list. So I really hope you take this um, and go clear out your email list. Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, if you do it, um, tell me how it goes. Um, and then if you have any friends, any business friends who you know have been complaining about low open rates and all of that, will you do them a favor and share this podcast with them um, so they can also hear about how they can do the same process. So share the love. All right. So I will be back with you guys next Tuesday for another episode. Bye for now.